The final polls are showing a tight race between the ruling Likud party and the insurgent blue and white, which is slightly ahead. But in Israel, it's a game of coalition politics. And Netanyahu looks like he has the clearer path to power because the right-wing bloc is stronger overall. But nothing is certain, nothing is final, and there are lots of ifs and room for surprises, which could yet see Benny Gantz given an opportunity to form a government. Here to help us break down the numbers, we have Yediot Aharonot Daily columnist, Ben Yemini, and Neri Zelber, independent journalist. Welcome both to the studio. Uh, let's show first the results we have from the final I-24 News Israel Ayon poll. The final poll, because in Israel we have a law saying we can't publish polls in the weekend leading up to the elections. So if elections were held today, who would you vote for? These are the final results. Blue and white would be ahead on 32 seats, 20% of the vote. The Likud party in second place with 27 seats, 17% of the vote. Coming in third, the Labour party with 10 seats. And then a gamut of parties between 8 and 5. Merits and United Torah Judaism on 5% apiece, 8 seats. Kulanu, the United Right Wing parties, the New Right and Zehut would each have 6 seats, 4% of the vote. Also on 4% of the vote after those right-wing parties, Hadash Ta'al, the Arab party, six seats, Shas on five seats. Overall, what does that mean? It means the right has 64 seats, the left center bloc has 50, and the Arabs have six because Balad Ram do not cross the threshold. But in case we haven't confused you enough, let's bring in our chorus, uh, let's bring in our guest because that does not give Netanyahu an automatic majority. Without those six seats from the far-right libertarian Zehut party led by Moshe Feiglin, Netanyahu does not have a majority. We're speaking of Feiglin as a possible wild card. Uh, Bendra, is it possible that Feiglin could be the card that gives Gantz a shot at forming a government? No, I'm not sure about that. Uh, considering the, his opinion, he's uh, the biggest tox of this uh election of this campaign. I mean, come on, we know his views. He uh, successfully manipulated everybody, and not everybody, but those who are uh, planning to vote for him. But don't take it seriously. There's the whole... Oh, his, his, his views are known, but Nero, look, even no, no, people... No, no, we, we know his no, no, views. His, 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 his views are known alongside extreme, legalizing poll. Extreme, right, right, the, the, extreme, There's also build right, the third yeah. temple, pay all the Arabs to leave. We know that, Nero, but, but, but that said, there are still figures on the Israeli right, whether it's Kulanu, whether it's the Israel Beitenu party, who aren't too keen on Netanyahu either. And it is possible that in such a scenario, maybe even if their ideas are closer to him. Could this create a constellation in which right-wing parties take advantage of the opportunity to bring down Netanyahu and put that episode behind us? So you touched on a very interesting thing. I, I'm not convinced that the blocks are as monolithic as uh, the polls and you know the commentary might warrant. Not at all, but we have to simplify. We have to simplify and it's useful for so the viewers. So let's complicate for our viewers now who are still watching. But, issue, but smaller right-wing parties like you mentioned Israel Beitenu and Lieberman or Kulanu and Kahlon, you could see a scenario where they're offered uh, very tantalizing prizes if Gantz were to win to enter his coalition and that's already taking votes away from the right-wing bloc to the so-called center center left uh, because one bloc. thing that could happen is that if indeed Netanyahu does not have a majority of people recommending him and blue and white has a significant lead maybe that gives them an opening well let's have a look at another uh, figure here we have from our polls because one opportunity for a surprise on election day is if not all groups of the population vote at the exact same rate. Israel has high voting rates, 72% last time. It's, it's even higher if we include, is, we take out the Israelis who are living abroad or they're on holiday. Uh, but how certain are people they're going to vote? Well, 82% will definitely vote or say there's a high chance they'll vote. Only 5% say there's a moderate chance. Only 13% say there's a, a low chance. Bender, I want to ask you, just in the last hour, Netanyahu has started what we call uh, in Israel, uh, using the Yiddish slang, a gewalt campaign, warning that the rule of the Likud is in danger. Uh, now, he's in dangerous territory here because he might end up getting a few more seats from the right. But as we saw, there are lots of parties that are floating now right around the electoral threshold. Uh, is there a risk here that the right ends up losing its majority because Netanyahu overperforms? Yeah, look, uh, look at Lieberman, for example, um, Israel Betenu. Uh, it's, it's very delicate, why? Because uh, we, we spoke about the idea that they actually will join the center-left coalition. Let me remind you, at the beginning of 2014, 
I spoke with Lieberman, and later on, a week after, he told it in his own voice, publicly, openly. He supported the John Kerry peace plan. A much more pragmatic yeah, man than many people yeah, give him credit for. No, but, but publicly, the I mean, Netanyahu, the way, Netanyahu but... never did it publicly. I mean, he did support somehow, but not as Lieberman, which means that he can be a very really, uh, pragmatic uh, uh, candidate to join the coalition uh, of Benny Gantz. And now that's, that's raised, raised... So if now maybe, maybe Netanyahu know uh, uh, a bit bet better than the all of us that actually he cannot really rely on Lieberman. So he doesn't care about him that much. But it's a very dangerous game that he's playing now because of this kind of he might have more seats for the Likud, he might lose the coalition, and, the uh, bloc. And that could provide an yeah. opening for Gantz to form it, the government. It, but, but, but even so, Neri, it, it looks very difficult with the numbers we have now to see how Gantz could form a government with Labour merits. Even if you throw in Kahlon and Zahut, and it's difficult to see how they fit together, is it possible that actually what we're looking at is a blue and white Likud unity government? Uh, it's possible, although uh, Blue and White have consistently, at least publicly, said they're not going to do that because of uh, the various uh, Netanyahu indictments looming. Uh, also, the campaign has been very nasty and very negative. Uh, you know, anything's possible in Israeli politics. Uh, you know, things can switch on a dime. But this one especially has been very, very negative. I personally don't see it happening, especially uh, with a hearing due in July. Uh, it might be a very short-lived Netanyahu government. Because even of course we have the, that but indictment we have, we're we expecting. We have something uh, highly important, which is uh, the, the key question, actually, is the um, Trump peace plan. Sure. I mean... Let's say that he is uh, presenting his plan, and let's say that Netanyahu is coming to Gantz and telling him, look, look, let's talk about the Israeli uh, uh, national interest, which is much more important than all the debates that we have. And that gives this him opening to so, backtrack yeah, a very explicit yeah, so, promise. So, not so, you, so what, are you going to give up this plan? Because the right-wing parties, the real right-wing parties, will not join uh, and uh, not support. Needs that breathing space. Now, by the way, half of the Likud is not going to support. Half of the Likud is not going to support. And we the... could see perhaps another so rupture, but just a minute, so... Eric, because I want to bring in another result here we have from our own uh, opinion <laughs> poll, because if Likud forms a right-wing government, it will contain anything from seven to maybe nine parties. That's a situation that will be very hard to govern, especially if, if it's only a very narrow majority. So what about a unity government? Indeed, according to our poll, nearly half of voters, 46%, uh, are against it, maybe because they think that their side can take everything. Nearly one-third, uh, 31 percent, uh, are in favor. Neri. So this is after three months of Netanyahu and the Likud campaign uh, emphasizing that Gantz and Lapid and Blue and White are left and weak and, uh, you know, in so, not in so many words, but essentially traitors. Um, Which is an extraordinary spin campaign when you it's consider it's the it's leaders of the party have been three former chiefs of staff. It's much more than that, I'll tell you why. Because this is now, actually, we are facing the Israeli paradox. What is the Israeli paradox? The Israeli paradox is that people are voting against their own will. Take every Pretty issue. voting against their own right will. I'll, I'll explain. Briefly, Take every, yeah, against, yeah. Against 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 annexation, for example. I mean, the right-wing uh, government is supporting annexation. I mean, majority of uh, Knesset members of the Likud, ministers, they support annexation. The majority of the Likud voters are against Our annexation. Guess,